Bless her name. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty and awesome God we serve. Who made it all possible. You're here today because God made it possible. You woke up this morning clothed in your right mind because God made it possible. You have a reasonable portion of your health and strength because God made it possible. You have somewhere to stay because God made it possible. You have some clothes in the closet because God made it possible. You have a pair of shoes to put on your feet because God made it possible. You're still among the land of the living. You're still among the land of the living. You're still among the land of the living because God made it possible. You still have joy because God made it possible. You still have peace because God made it possible. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. He is worthy of all the glory. All the honor and praise belongs to him. God did that thing. God did that thing. Nothing too hard. Nothing too hard. Yes, sir. Hallelujah, God. We bless his name on today. Yes, God. You are worthy. You are worthy, God. You are an awesome God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. 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 We thank him on today being the kind and loving God that he's been. Thank him for we are his people, the sheep of his pasture, and under the shadow of his wings will we hide. And give it honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All those of the household of faith, all the members of Beauty Spot Baptist Church, to the ministers of the gospel, deacons, mothers, saints, and friends, those watching us via Facebook and YouTube. Another beautiful day the Lord has made, and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Give an honor to my lovely, awesome wife, Dr. Fuller. To you, you, and you, there is a word from the Lord to the people of God. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Amen. Let us not forget of the meeting I want to see. If you are south of 50, I need to see you in the new fellowship hall after service for a little while. We good? And you know if you're south of 50. Not, not south of 50 in your mind. <laughs> Amen. Revelation chapter 4, that's all the way in the back for those that are looking. We're beginning a new series on today dealing with the attributes of God. But I want you to see something as we begin this series. To drop down with me to the eighth verse. When you have it, say amen. Reading from the New King James Version. It says, the four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night, saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Who was and is and is to come. Now, whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the Bible said the 24 elders fall down before him 
who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. I want to back up one more time and read that 11th verse. Uh, the 24 elders fall down, and they said, You are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to speak to you today from the topic of the holiness of God. The holiness of God. I want you to understand something as we set the tone for this particular message because we don't talk about holiness much in church. But holiness is still required of the Lord's people. Am I speaking English in here today? Holiness is still required. That means it's a mandate for God's people. But in order to understand how holiness applies to us, we need to see God for who he is. How I many know when you see God for who he is, you will never, ever be the same again? You show me a person that's discouraged all the time, i show you somebody that hasn't had a glimpse of the holiness of God because I read somewhere it says, in his presence there's fullness of joy. And at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Now the word holy and holiness, they have to be significant because they appear in the Bible over 600 times. God must be trying to tell us something. So let's look at the definition for holy. It means to be consecrated, morally pure, set apart, worthy of all, dignity, honor, and respect. Let me say that again. It means to be consecrated, morally pure, set apart, worthy of all, dignity, honor, and respect. Now, when it refers to man, I'm talking about the holiness of God, but when it refers to man, it's to be set apart, dedicated to God, morally pure, and conformed to God's will. So in order to say that I'm holy, that means you're making your statement to the world that in your daily living, that you are conformed to the will of God. How many know that God is still working on us? Okay, let me know. Let me, let me say that again. How many know that God is still working on us? How many can say you've come a long way, but you still have a long way to go? But thank God that he won't leave us alone, and God will take us through the fire in order to purify our faith. In the book of Revelation, in the first three chapters, we hear the story about the early church and about the church history. But by the time it gets to chapter 4, we see a shift. And the Bible says in that first verse in chapter 4, the scene shifts from earth to heaven. Amen. Uh, how many want to get to heaven one day? Amen. Uh, how many looking forward to the day when you hear the Lord say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. Uh, but I want you to see what John saw that God allowed him to see. Now, in this first verse, the Bible says, after these things, I look and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet. That means the voice was very, very loud speaking with me saying, come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. Now, the voice spoke very loudly and it summoned 
John the Apostle up to a place called heaven. Wouldn't you love to be in the shoes of John and get a glimpse of what heaven looks like? Amen. See, we too earthly bound, amen, that we're not even looking forward to the day when we see the Lord face to face and hear him say, well done thy good and faithful servant. Amen. Now watch how this plays out in verse 2. It says, immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne set in heaven and guess what? And one sat on the throne. Amen. Now understand something. Amen. What he sees, amen, is a glimpse of the holiness of God Almighty. Now in that setting, there are creatures around the throne. Now I want you to understand these are some peculiar looking creatures around the throne. But we do not want to focus on what they look like. We want to rather focus on what they were doing and what they were saying. Let me say that one more time. We're not focused on what they look like, but what we are focused on is what they were doing and what they say. Now, too often or not, we come to church and we focus on what someone looks like, but how many know that man looks at the outer appearance, but God looks at the heart of the person? So now these four living creatures, the Bible says in verse chapter, in verse 8, it says they each having peculiar looking six wings. They were full of eyes around and within. Now the symbolism of the eyes means that they're always before the all-seeing eye of God. In other words, what it means is nothing is hidden from the all-seeing eye of God. How many know that midnight is no different from the middle of the day with God? If you live right at midnight, night, then you ought to live right during the daytime. If you walk right during the daytime, then you ought to walk right when the sun goes down. But in order to walk right, you need to be acquainted with the holiness of God. Holiness is not just reserved for certain people in certain denominations. Holiness is a lifestyle. And the reason why we know that it's important, because the Bible says, without this, no man shall see the Lord. I wish I had uh, some praying folks in here today. Now watch this now. They were full of eyes uh, around and within. But look at this unique part of verse 8 here that it says uh, something that we didn't expect to see. It says they do not rest. Day or night. They do not take off. They do not go on vacation. They do not take a nap, but they don't rest day or night. So if they're up all day and all night, I need to find out what in the world are they doing. Now they're not up all day and all night to see if the church folks came to church. They're not up... They're not up all day and all night to see who sung in the choir or what color the choir had on. They're not worried about where they fit in on the program. They're not worried about whether or not somebody mentioned their name. Because in heaven, heaven, I hate to bust your bubble, heaven is not about us. Heaven is about God Almighty and Him getting the glory from His people. Lord have mercy. It said they do not rest day or night, but look at what they're saying. Holy. 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 Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. Before whatever you can think of, God was. In the present tense, God is. In the future tense, God will be. Because God operates outside of time. That's why we walk by faith and not by sight. Do you hear me today? It said they're crying holy, holy, holy. The Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. So as we're talking about the holiness of God, I want you to understand something. Whenever you see a word repeated three times in the Hebrew text, it means they're trying to place emphasis. It means 
He's not only holy, but he's holy, holy, holy. Oh, y'all didn't get that. He's not only holy one time. Because when you talk about the holiness of God, you can't just say it one time. He's holy. And then when you think about how holy he is, you got to say it again. He's holy for the second time. And he's holy for the third time. How many have caught a glimpse of the holiness of God in your own life? And it changed the way you see God. It changed the way you see people. And it changed the way you see yourself. In Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah, Uzziah, the king, had a particular situation that came in his life. And he died. And in the year that he died, the Bible said, uh, Isaiah went into the house of the Lord and saw the Lord sitting. Now, that just goes to show you now real quick, just as a sidebar, when you're in grief, get back to church. Stuff is going on in your life, amen. Take a minute to grieve, take a minute to catch your breath, and hurry back to the house of God. Because sometimes uh, God can get his greatest messages to us uh, when we're at our lowest point in life. Uh, I know I'm talking to people in this building uh, that has been through some grief, uh, that has been through some struggles, uh, but when you got into the house uh, of the Lord, uh, you forgot about yourself, uh, and you begin uh, to concentrate uh, on him uh, and begin to worship him uh, in spirit and in truth, and you forgot all about your troubles because in God's presence is the fullness of joy. He said, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim, that's heavenly beings, each one having six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. But I want you to see what they were doing too. And one cried to another, verse 3, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. That means the God of armies. The whole earth, the whole earth, the entire earth is full of the glory of the Lord. It may temporarily look like the enemy's winning, but guess what? Flip over to the back of the book. We win. It may look difficult right now, but flip over to the back of the book because one day he's going to come back and crack the sky and every eye's going to see him. So the whole earth is full of the glory of the Lord. Now watch this now as we get back to our text. Now these four living creatures, they don't go to sleep. They don't rest. So they're up day and night. And they're crying, holy, holy, holy. See, they understand their particular assignment, amen. My question to us today is, do we understand our particular assignment? Now, just as these creatures were designed to give praise and glory to God, did you know that human beings were also created for God's glory? Did you know that the church is supposed to be giving God the honor every chance that they get? Amen. And I want you to understand now, I hate to bust your bubble, but heaven is much different than earth because I want you to see what they're engaged in now. So if they do not rest day or night saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come, that means they have an intimate knowledge of who God is, which leads me to my first point. The holiness of God causes us to seek him diligently so that we can know him personally. And again, the holiness of God, it causes us to seek him diligently so that we can know him personally. Anybody ever sought the Lord? Don't fool me now. Anybody ever sought the Lord? Anybody ever stole away to Jesus and begin to tell him all about your troubles? Anybody ever blocked out all the distractions and said, Lord, I need a word from you. I need you to lead and guide me in the way in which you have me to go. Anybody ever said, Lord, I need you to order my steps in your word. Lord, I need you to lead me down the path of righteousness for your name's sake. But, but, but these are not the only beings that's giving God glory in heaven. See, see we picture heaven as being a solemn place. As if there were a funeral going on. 
But you got to change your mindset and picture heaven. What I'm reading is heaven sounds like a ball game. Oh, y'all don't hear me up in here today. Amen. That ain't spiritual enough for y'all because, because I want you to see something now. In verse 9 it says, whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne. Notice who the glory goes to. Notice who the honor goes to. Notice who the thanks goes to. It said whenever they do that, and they give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever. Now, let me explain something to you about glory. Glory is dignity, honor, splendor that is due to our God. It's dignity, honor, and splendor that is due to our God. When something is due, that means it's something that's been owed. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Okay, let me, let me clear it up for you. Anybody ever had a bill due? Okay, let me, let me make it plain for you. Anybody ever had a bill due? Now, don't you say amen because I know it's just the first of the month. Amen, amen. You got something due. Do I have a witness up in here? You got something to do, amen. You scratching your head, amen. God, you gave me a short month. I got a long month this time. I, I need you to come see about me and watch over me, amen. Anybody ever had a bill due? Now, now, when you see the due date on the bill, you're responsible for paying what you owe. That's why they say payment due. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. See, in the same manner here, when we give God the glory and the honor, that's due his name. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. When we give God the praise, that's due his name. That means it's something that we owe him. It's a privilege to be able to shout hallelujah. It's a privilege to be able to come to the house of the Lord. It's a privilege to be able to clap your hands. It's a privilege to be able to lift your hands. Stop acting like God is glad just because you showed up. What did you come to the house of God for? Did you come here to give him the glory that he is due? Did you come here to give him the honor that he's due? Did you come here to give him the praise that he's due? We owe it. We owe it. God owes us nothing. We owe him everything. Somebody missed that. God owes us nothing. We owe him everything. Now watch this now. Now the 24 elders are watching, if I could say, the, the four big boys that's around the throne giving him praise. They said, whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and begin to worship him who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne. Now watch this now. Now when they begin to see the four beasts worshiping God. Now, you got to understand now, God doesn't say anything in the entire chapter. Because when you God, this is what God does. See, in heaven, we think God is moving around. God's just going. See, the young people would say God got swag. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying up in here. Because God knows who he is. And he knows that if we don't praise him, uh, the rocks will cry out. Uh, if we don't give him glory, he will find somebody to. Uh, if we don't give him honor, he will find somebody to give him honor. He's, in, he's seated on his majestic position on the throne of God, and he doesn't have to say anything. Why? Because when you know you're God, you don't have to tell everybody who you are. Somebody will speak up for you. Watch this now. Watch this. The 24 elders, they fall down before him. Whenever you fall down before God, that's a sign of humility and a sign of worship in the Bible. Amen. And even if you get your pants dirty. Even if you run your mascara, it doesn't matter to you. 
Even if, even if you shake your curls out, it won't matter to you. Even if you shake your wig off, it won't matter to you. Even if you come out of your shoes, it ought not to matter to you. I wish we had some people in the house of God today that stop looking around trying to make sure it's okay with everybody else. If you holler out every now and then, I wish we had a few people that come to the house of God that woke up on Sunday morning and say, I'm glad to be among the number. I'm glad to be in the land of the living. I'm glad to be saved. I'm glad to be redeemed. Is there anybody here that come to worship the king of kings because he's holy? Holy! Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and is to come. So the 24 help. They saw the four creatures they said, we want some of that. Yeah, I'm not going to let a rock speak out for me. I'm not going to let a rock cry out in my place. Now watch this now. And, and when they do that, uh, and when they saw them worshiping, uh, they cast their crowns before the throne. Now this is significant too, because in the Bible, a crown has to be earned. Now, if a crown has to be earned, that means it was given to them a crown. But when you get in the presence of God and you realize it's not about you, I will take this crown off my head because there's one person that's worthy of all the crowns. There's one person, I know I work hard and I earned a crown, but because I'm in the presence of an almighty God, I don't care about my crown. I don't care about my clothes. I just care about the one who hung and bled and died so that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. Watch this now. They cast their crowns before the throne. And they bow down and begin to worship. In Psalm 29 and 2, look at what the psalmist said. Give unto the Lord the glory, is that word again, due to his name. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Now, in order to give him the glory that's due his name, you got to recognize who he is. That's personal. Anybody know what it is to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Not because somebody told you about him, but because you know too much about him. Not because somebody told you how good he is, but because you've seen how good he is. Not because somebody told you that he's a way-making God, but you've seen in your life that God is a way-making God. Not because somebody told you that he's a healer, but because you've experienced the healing power of God in your body. Not because somebody told you that he can bring you out of darkness, but you know that you were once lost in sin, but Jesus took you in. Uh, then the light of heaven uh, filled my soul. He filled my heart uh, with love uh, and he wrote my name above. Uh, and just to talk uh, with Jesus uh, will make everything uh, all right. Uh, how many know just a little talk uh, will make everything all right? Say so give unto the glory due to his name. When you hear his name, you ought to shake. When you hear his name, it ought to move something in you. Some folks been in church since the 70s, ain't moved nothing yet. God forbid. Uh, you mean to tell me you did all that moving uh, when you were in the world? Uh, you did all that moving uh, when you were on the devil's side uh, and you ain't said amen uh, since 1980 uh, and I know God has been good. Uh, some of us ain't missed a meal. Uh, some of us got clothes to wear. Some of us got something to drive. Uh, you can think of something uh, to thank God for because uh, had it not been for his goodness, uh, had it not been for his love, uh, had it not been for his mercy, he said, give him the glory that's due to his name. Don't wait till you flat on your back in the hospital and wish you could get back to church again. Why are you in the land of the living? Why are you in the house of the Lord? Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Woo! 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 Glory of God. The glory of God, it goes beyond church. 
it goes beyond religiosity. When you experience the glory of God, you can experience it in your house. You don't hear what I'm saying. When you got a personal relationship with God, you can be riding down the highway and the tears begin to flow. And you can say, God, I just give you honor. I just give you glory. I just give you thanks. It could have been a lot worse, but thank God that it's as well as it is. Now watch this now. He said, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. There is a beauty that holiness brings that has nothing to do with your clothes. He didn't say in the beauty of clothing. He didn't say it. He didn't say in the beauty, in the beauty of your outfit, in the beauty of your shoes, in the beauty of your hairstyle. All those things that we deem were important. And, and, and guess what? Let me, let me tell you a secret. You hook that stuff up like you want to. But if you too cute to worship, or as, or as my grandma used to say, if you too John Brown cute to worship, go back home and put on something where you can run around the church in, where you can sweat through, because if God been that good, he ought to give him the glory that's due his night. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the honor. He deserves all the praise. Worship him in the beauty of holiness. Huh? We spend so much time trying to decorate the outer at the expense of the inner. But when you get the inward man right, your outer man will shine. When you get the heart of a person right, then they'll shine on the outside. When you clean the person up on the inside, then somebody that know them ought to know that you've been in the presence of a holy and all-wise God. Worship him in the beauty of holiness. Point number two, the holiness of God causes us to know him personally so that we can see him clearly. The holiness of God causes us to know him personally so that we can see him clearly. You will complain a lot less when you know him personally. You will grumble a lot less when you know him personally. See, so, some of us, God, want God to do something mighty miraculous in our life. He already did some miraculous when he saved you and gave you the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, now, now I, want, I want you to understand what's going on here. So, so holiness of God, it, when we know him personally, we can see him clearly. So in other words, the closer you walk to him, you ought to be able to see more than you once could be able to see. The closer you walk to him, you ought to be able to run and not be weary. The closer you walk to God, you ought to have a little more strength than you once have. Can somebody say, amen, I've come a mighty long way, but I still have a ways to go. Thank God I'm not the person that I used to be, but I still have a few things that I need to roll on, a few things I need to work through, a few things I need to iron out. Now, now watch what the 24 elders were doing now. They, they weren't looking at the four trying to see it from their opinion if it took all that. But when they saw giving praise, honor, that's why corporate worship is so important in the church. Sometime when that praise starts moving around. Sometime when the Spirit of the Lord starts moving in the midst of the people of God. You might didn't feel anything on that particular song, but as the Spirit of the Lord begins to work in the midst of the people of God, sometimes what was on somebody else, it will jump off on you. And you tried to sit down, but you couldn't. You tried to hush, but you couldn't. But if I couldn't say a word, I just... Oh, I wish I had somebody that came to give him glory because he's holy. 
you got to see him as holy if you're ever going to become holy yourself. Now, now watch what they were doing. These 24 elders, they said, you are worthy. Some of you retired because he's worthy. Some of you went out to the field and made it back safely because God worthy. Some of you military folks been overseas, amen, amen, in all kind of situations, uh, and you made it back all right. You mean to tell me you don't know that God is worthy? I wish I had some Holy Ghost help up in here. You've been, some, you've been through some things you can't even tell nobody about. Uh, you got to delete certain parts uh, because they couldn't believe uh, why you still in your right mind. Uh, somebody ought to thank God uh, that he didn't let you crack up uh, when you were at your lowest point. Uh, somebody ought to thank God uh, that he didn't give up on you uh, when folks gave up on you. The 24 elders. They said, you are worthy. Oh, Lord. To receive glory and honor, power. You are worthy, oh Lord, to receive glory, to receive honor and power. Every day you get up, you ought to say, you're worthy, oh Lord, to receive glory, to receive honor, and to receive power. Now, now I want to show you something here real quick. In this text, Nobody asked God for anything. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. I done messed some of you up, ushers, like them doors. Amen. Oh, come on now. Now, now understand something. Because uh, when, you, when your perspective on God begins to change, you realize you got everything you need. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying? When your perspective on God begins to change, you don't come to God with a list of God, can you do this? God, can you open up that door? Now, those prayers are appropriate at certain times, but sometimes we need to come to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't want nothing today. I don't need nothing today. I forgot to thank you for the 10 things that you did for me last week. I forgot to thank you for the 30 things that you did for me last month. I forgot to thank you for how you watched over me in 2023. But I thank you, God. I don't want you, if you don't any, do anything else, you've already done more, more than enough. Stop using God as a blessing machine and acknowledge him for who he is. Acknowledge him for who he is. Just love on him and let him know how good he is. Just love on him for a little while. Don't ease him out of his presence so quickly. Sit there at his feet for a while and tell him how good he's been. Tell him about how far he's brought you. Tell him how you could have been headed down a wrong road, but God snatched you back from the pit of hell and put you on the right road. He said, you are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Why? For you created all things. That includes us. And by your will, they exist and were created. We exist because of him, not because of us. You better learn to be appreciative. You better learn to be appreciative of a good God. You better learn to be thankful of a good God. You still breathing because of God. You still breathing because of God. You still in your right mind because of God. You still blessed because of God. How many can say, surely goodness, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord because when we come to the house of the Lord where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst and where the spirit of the Lord is. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. You got a, you, you got a glimpse of his holiness, though. So, so some people are frustrated because you've you never seen him clearly. Because you've never sought him diligently. You can't see him clearly until you seek him diligently. That's why it says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name while he's near. Amen? In Exodus 15, 11, when they began to praise God, I like Israel too, because they made they, they, Israel was they, they had their faults, 
but they understood who God was. They understood what it is to magnify his name. Watch this now. They said, who is like you, O Lord? You ever said that in your private prayer time? You went before God and said, who is like you, Lord? I was headed down a dark road, but you pulled me back. I was caught up into something, but you snatched me out. My child was wayward, but you brought him home. And even if they ain't got home yet, it doesn't mean they're not coming home. Uh, weeping may endure for a night, uh, but joy comes in the morning. Uh, wait on the Lord and be of good courage uh, and believe that he's going to strengthen uh, your heart. It said, who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? When the saints come together, we come to glorify the name of the Lord. When the saints come together on Sunday morning, uh, it's for one primary purpose. Uh, it's to glorify the name of the Lord. Uh, now, my question is, what did you come uh, to do today? Uh, what did you come here for? Uh, did you come here to magnify his name? Uh, did you come here to tell him uh, how good he's been? Uh, did you come here to tell him thank you? Did you come here to lift up holy hands uh, in the sanctuary? The Bible said, let us uh, offer up to him uh, the sacrifice uh, of praise, uh, which is the fruit of lips uh, giving thanks uh, unto his name. Watch this now. It said, who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. Wonders are the things that God does that you can't explain. Anybody ever had God do some wonders? Anybody ever had God do some wonders? Anybody ever had God show you a sign to let you know if you're going to hang in there a little while longer, help is on the way? Anybody ever had God work some things out uh, that you never thought would get worked out? Uh, anybody ever had God open doors uh, that you never thought would be open? Uh, anybody ever had God uh, step in uh, just in the nick of time uh, when the enemy said no, no, uh, God says yes, yes. Fearful in praises uh, and doing wonders. Uh, Revelation 15, 4 says, Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify? Your name. When you hear the name, something ought to move. When you hear the name, something ought to shake. Don't, don't pretend you don't know how to shake. It just depends on what you're shaking for. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying, amen. See, we used to have a certain shaking part, amen, but we know how to shake and we know why we shake. We know how to say hallelujah and we know why we say hallelujah. We know who to give the glory to and we know who to give the honor to. Anybody know what I'm saying? He said, who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? Why? For you alone are holy. For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship before you ascribing worth to the person of God. Why? Because he's worthy to be praised. Woo, child. All nations shall come and worship before you, for your judgments have been manifested. All nations shall come together to magnify your holy name. All nations shall come together to give you the glory that you deserve. All nations shall come together. And there's going to come a time when every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is King of Kings, that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords. Point number three, the holiness of God causes us to see him clearly so that we can worship him freely. The holiness of God causes us to see him clearly so that we can worship him freely. The holiness of God causes us to see him clearly so that we can worship him freely. How many can say I can see clearer now because I'm in a different place? 
I can see things uh, that I once could not see. I experienced things uh, that I never thought uh, I would experience. Uh, but thank God uh, for the trouble. Uh, if I not had trouble, how would I know uh, that God could bring me uh, out of trouble? If I never been through a storm, uh, then how would I know uh, that this holy God uh, can carry me through the storm? Uh, if I never had uh, to shed a tear, uh, then how would I know uh, that God uh, could dry every one of them? Uh, if I never been ridiculed, uh, how would I ever know that God is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother? Has anybody in this building got a glimpse of the holiness of God? Because once you see God as he is, you will never, ever, ever be the same again. The holiness of God. Said the 24 when they saw the four. The four said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Now, this is going on at the throne of God. And we think we're ready for heaven. Oh, you ain't seen getting down yet. Oh, it ain't about singing in the heavenly choir when you get to heaven. It's about the one who sits on the throne. And because they couldn't even put into words to describe God, all they can say is holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and who is to come. And the Bible said they rest not day and night. So that means all day long, if you run by the throne of God, then you would hear the four creatures bow down saying holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. But every time they be Begin to say holy, holy, holy. The 24 elders look over there and then they just fall down and they said, Receive glory, receive honor, receive power. Why? Because you are worthy of all the glory. You are worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The holiness of God, it causes us to do right when we want to do wrong. The holiness of God, it causes us to straighten up after we've messed up. The holiness of God, it causes us to run and not be weary. The holiness of God, it causes us to walk and not faint. The holiness of God, it causes us to exalt his name in praise. The holiness of God, it causes us to magnify his name in worship. The holiness of of God, it causes us to glorify his name with gratitude. Are there any grateful people in this house that glad you got Jesus, that glad you've been saved, that's glad you've been sanctified, that's glad you've been washed in the soul cleansing blood of a crucified lamb? The holiness of God causes us to honor his name in thanksgiving. It's okay if you run and knock your hat off. It's okay if you sweat through your clothes. Just take them to the clean room. It's okay if you shake them curls loose. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying today. It's okay if you scuff your shoes on a pew. It's okay if you leave the church. When you come to engage in worship, you ought to leave church tired. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying? If you come to worship God, you ought to leave church tired. When they give the benediction, you ought to say, Woo, child, we praise the Lord today. Do I have any crazy praises in this house today that came to magnify the name of the Lord that want to gather together with the four creatures and the 24 elders? I don't know about you. I might not be at the table, but if I got a seat in the kingdom, I'm going to join that 24 and I'm going to join those four creatures saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. He hung high and they stretched him wide, but on the third day, he got up with all power in his hand and because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth living 
because he lives. He is holy. You got to see him in his holiness. When you see how holy he is, then we begin to understand how holy we're not. When Isaiah got, got a glimpse of God, he said, woe is me. For I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people with unclean lips. Why? For mine eyes have seen the king. Have your eyes seen the king? Has anybody come acquainted with the king? Has anybody had God open your eyes and show you his glory? Has anybody had the Lord open your eyes and show you his goodness? Has anybody ever had the Lord open your eyes and show him his mercy? Has anybody ever had the Lord speak to your heart and you'll never be the same again? You remember that exact moment when the Lord stepped into your life and let you know that the good work in your life that I began, I'm going to see it through to the finish. He's holy. So in light of that, as I close, so what does the Lord require of us as his people? Once we get a glimpse of his holiness, now we know what the standard is. Even if we never hit it, don't mean there's not one. That's why Paul said, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press, I, I fell down, but I got back up and brushed myself up because I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. Got knocked back a couple times, but I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. Been ridiculed by a few, but I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. Been talked about, called everything but a child of God, but I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Because Paul said, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, is going to give me at that day, and not to me only but to all who love his appearing. Not to all, period, but to all who love his appearing. It implies that everybody won't, in lo won't love his appearing. That's why he said to the apostle Peter, be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. To the church of God, if we're going to be like God, then we must be holy. We must be pure. Yeah, you messed up yesterday. Work on it today. Don't wallow in your mistakes. Don't wallow in your mistakes. There's enough people around you that's going to remind you of them. But they're not God. Huh? Get back up and get in the race. And realize that the race is not given to the swift, nor to the strong, but to the one that endures until the end. Get a glimpse of the holiness of God. It'll change your perspective on everything. When you get a glimpse of his holiness, you'll sleep like a log. And God will have to knock you in the side like he did Peter in jail to wake you up. That's when you got peace like a river. Not because of what you know up here, because of who you know in here. And you know who you belong to. It's personal. It's personal. Can anybody say it's personal? Anybody striving to be holy? Because without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Stay in the race. Stay in the race and run the race with faith and patience, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord Jesus and the pardon of your sins, you can come now while the blood is running warm in your veins. Tomorrow's promise to no man now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. If you hear the Lord's voice, harden not your heart. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And when I stand at the door and knock, all you have to do is open up the door and allow him to come in. He said, If you allow him to come in, he'll come in and sup, fellowship, dine with you. If you're here today, and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, and you desire to do so, you can come now while the blood is running warm in your veins. Tomorrow's promised 
to no man. Now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. Or maybe you're already saved and you're looking for a church home. You can also come at this time. Everybody needs to be saved. Bless you. Bless you. There's still room. There's still room. Two things everybody needs. You need to know Jesus for yourself. You need to be saved. There's too much going on in the world to assume you're going to see tomorrow. Too much going on in the world. The world has gone mad. If you don't believe me, turn on your TV for five minutes. We are living in perilous times. It's no time to be trying to exist without the Lord. You can't fight this battle by yourself. We all need the Lord. We all need the Lord. We all need the Lord. We were created for his purpose. We were created for his glory. We were created for a relationship. That's what broke down in the garden. But Jesus died to bring it back. To restore what the enemy stole from God's people. To recreate us in the image of God through the process of salvation. Two things. You need to be saved and you need to be a member of a local church. The church itself is a body of believers who come to a building to worship God. The church is a body of believers who come to a building to worship God. Now, there's going to be times in your life when you're going to be going through. Nobody's going to necessarily know what you're going through, but it's the prayers of the saints that's going to undergird you. Some people have made it not because they prayed, but sometimes because somebody prayed for them and had them on their mind and took the time to pray for them. You never know who's holding your name up before the Lord. Hallelujah. Make some concrete decisions today. Say, Lord, I take you as my Savior. Lord, I'm coming to be a part of the local church. God is doing some great and mighty things in this place, and we thank him for all that he is. I want you to think about something else before we pray. When we think about our relationship with the Lord, how are you and God doing these days? Say what, what you attended this week. That's good. You should. How are you and God doing this week? How's things between you and God? these days are you on speaking terms when you cry out can he distinguish your voice and can you distinguish his are you spiritual or are you just religious Religion is when I do something out of habit and tradition, but I don't know why. Spiritual is when I do what I do for his glory, honor, and praise. For the honor of the one that sits on the throne. How are things? We never stop to think about that. And we go around people all day, all the time. We run into people as if, as if we just had coffee with God five minutes ago. How are things? I want you to think about that all through this week. How are things between you and God? Relationship with the person that impacts everything we do, everything we say, how we live. Do you have the fire you once had? Do you have the zeal you once had? The zeal to serve. How's your love walk? How's your forgiveness doing? 
a little difficult. See, it's more than just going through different rituals and church. And we do all those things, but we got to know the why behind the what. That's why the scripture says, whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto man. Knowing that from the Lord, ultimately, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. But we don't get a well done if we haven't done well. Think about that this week. How's things between me and God? Make it personal. Because when it becomes personal, then you'll see the glory. God will show you some things that you've never seen before. You will experience some things you've never experienced before. And you'll wake up one day and you'll find yourself in a totally different place with God and you wouldn't take nothing for it. You wouldn't take nothing for it because you remember the place you were in when he found you. Every head by every eye closed. Father God, we love you today. Because you heard our cry and pity out every groan. Lord, we thank you for being our God. We are your people, the sheep of your pasture. And under the shadow of your wings will we hide. Thank you for blessing our going out. And our coming in in the city and in the field. Thank you, Lord, that your eyes are over the righteous and your ears are open to our cry. Thank you for being God. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies. Thank you for looking beyond all our faults and seeing every one of our needs. Strengthen us with might in the inner man. Help us to be better, Lord. Help us to be wiser. Help us to be stronger, Lord. Father God, forgive us, Lord, for our many sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. Create in us a clean heart and renew a right and a steadfast spirit within us. Forgive us for the times when we didn't take time to pray. Forgive us, Lord, when we haven't served you as we should. Forgive us, Lord, for when we haven't worshipped you as you should. Lord, because you've been so good to us, Lord. If we had 10,000 tongues, it still wouldn't be enough to give you the praise that you deserve to give you the honor that you deserve, to give you the glory that you deserve. But Lord, you have been a shelter for us. You've been the lifter of our head, and we glorify and magnify your name. Thank you for your presence, Lord, for in your presence there's fullness of joy, and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Lord, we love you today. We bless you. We praise your holy and righteous name, Lord. We pray that you will continue to lead us and guide us in the way in which you have us to go. Lord, we lift up the sick and shut-in members. Lord, those that are homebound. Lord, that those that wish they could come but were unable to for whatever reason, Lord. You know all about every situation and every circumstance. Show yourself strong on the behalf of your people. And Lord, we'll be so careful to give your name the praise. All the glory and honor belongs to you. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. Let the people of God say amen. 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 Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Okay. Amen. We have here Sister Tamara Lewis Christian. Amen. Come to unite with the Beauty Spot Church family. She's already saved. She's just coming aboard. Amen. Amen. Come to unite with the Beauty Spot Church family. We are glad to have her on board. Amen. And we just thank God for what he's going to do in her life. And may God continue to bless her and heaven smile upon her. Amen. At this time. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a mighty and awesome God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Get a glimpse of the holiness of God, because when you do, you will never, ever, ever be the same. God is in the transformation business, and in order to be a light in this dark world, it's going to take transformed people to transform people. It's going to take transformed people people in order to transform people. It's going to take changed folks to help change folks. 
Because, see, we got to show them that this is real. If we don't show them this is real, then we give them room to doubt what we believe. Amen. How many got something out of the lesson on today? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Those that are watching online, if you could please stand fast. We're going to have a few announcements. Amen. By Reverend Wynn, we're going to go right into the Lord's Supper. Amen. Those of you um, 50 down, amen, please see me at the church in the new dining hall.